Jesus is Lord, Jesus is King, come sing hallelujah, that Jesus is King. I welcome you, the new and the old subscribers, to Jesus for All. Today we'll be continuing our reading of the Old Testament from 1 Samuel chapter 6. The Ark returned to Israel. If you have been following us on this channel, you know that we read 1 Samuel chapter 5 in our last video and um, it was interesting in the comment section that we all um, had a good grasp of what the Lord was doing. And so, in that um, chapter, we, we read about how the Ark of God was being captured by the Philistines. And sooner than it was captured, God's power started dealing with them. Dealing with them, showing them that it was not their power that made them to capture the ark. That was something so sacred to God. So much sacred as we referenced it back to Exodus 25 when God dictated to Moses or when God um, read out to Moses how the ark should be constructed, the measurements. So it was something very sacred and what was being placed in it, testimonies and so on. So God was not going to just allow the Philistines who did not even know him either to think it was their power that made them defeat Israel. No. God sent a message to his people, Israel, that he was displeased with them for the priest and his sons who offended, treated his offering without respect, without honor, started sleeping around with the woman at the tent of the meeting. And we also reference that that men should be very careful of what they do because God will not share his glory with them. They are his people as well as the women because in Genesis 1 27 according to the purpose of creation God made them male and female in its image. And one is not allowed to disrespect the other because when you so do, you are disrespecting God. That is God's image. And also, the things of offering, the things of its sacrifice, was a reverent thing. People came there to worship, not expecting the sons of the priest to molest them, sleep with them. Such things were not supposed to be happening. And when God was warning them, by the time their father rebuked them, it was too little too late. So these are the things men need to learn that you cannot 
treat what belongs to God as if it's your possession. Not only were they doing that, it, we were also told in chapter 5 that Phineas was married. So what he was doing was immoral and adulterous. His wife, as a result of this, as a result of God's displease with them, they were killed at that battle. Both himself and his brother Hophni was killed. The ark was captured by the Philistines. On hearing the news, their father fell off his chair and broke his neck, died. Phineas' wife went into labor, untimely labor, because we were told that it was at the news that she went into labor, gave birth, and died. So there are consequences, serious consequences, when Men play disregards what is God's, what they are supposed to respect and honor when they, when they do not. God, that such things can arouse God's wrath. In those days, Christ was in the spirit. But we who are believers, we are so blessed that we have Christ, our intercessor, our redeemer, that when you come to Christ, it teaches you a way, a new way. He comes into your life, cleanses you, shows you the right path, and when he finishes that encounter with you, he doesn't leave us alone. He gives us, leaves us with the Holy Spirit that starts guiding us, guiding our path daily so that we, it does not get to this stage where it got to for Hophni and Phineas. So, in that chapter 5, we saw that everywhere the ark went, that was disaster, and God inflicted the lands of the Philistines and their lords with two more. So let us read. The ark returned to Israel. The ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us with what we shall send it to his place. They said, If you send away the ark of God, of Israel, do not send it empty. But by all means return him with a guilt offering. Then you will be healed. And it will be well. And it will be known to you. Why his hand does not turn away from you. And they said. What is the guilt offering. That we shall return to him. They answered. Five golden tumors and five golden mines, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For the same plague of the Philistines, or for the same plague, was on all you and your lords. So you must make images of your tumors and images of your mice that ravage the land. And give glory to the God of Israel. If 
perhaps he will lighten his hand from off you and your gods and your land. Why should you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh harden their hearts? After he had dealt severely with them, did they not send the people away? And they departed. Now then, take and prepare a new cart and two milk cows on which there has never come a yoke. And therefore, the cows to the cart, but take their cows home away from them. And take the ark of the God, the ark of the Lord, and place it on the cart, and put a box at his side, the figures of gold which you are returning to him as a guilt offering. Then send it off, and let it go its way, and watch if it goes up on the way to its own land. To Beth Shemesh, then it is he who has done us this great harm. But if not, then he shall know that it is not his hand that struck us. It happened to us by coincidence. Verse 10 The men did so and took two milk cows yoked them to the cart and shut up their cows at home. And they put the ark of the Lord on the cart and the box with the golden mice and the images of their tumors. And the cows went straight in the direction of Beth Shemesh along one highway, lowly as they went Lowly as they went, they turned neither to the right nor to the left, and the lords of the Philistines went after them as far as the border of Beth Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley, and when they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark, they rejoiced to see it. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Bethlehem and stopped there. A great force, a, a great stone was there. Let's read that again, verse 14. The cart came into the field of Joshua of Bethlehem and stopped there. A great stone was there. And they split up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the box that was beside it, in which were the golden figures, and set them upon the great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices on that day to the Lord, to the Lord. Verse 16, And when the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned that day to Ekron. These are the golden tumors that the Philistines returned as a guilt offering to the Lord, one for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, one for Ekron, and the golden mice, according to the number of the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords, both fortified cities and on walled villages. The great stone beside which they set down the ark of the Lord is a witness to this day 
in the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. Verse 19, And he struck some of the men of Beth Shemesh, because they looked upon the ark of the Lord. He struck seventy men of them. And the people mourned, because the Lord had struck the people with a great blow. Then the men of Beshme said, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? And to whom shall he go up away from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriajarim, saying, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please share, comment what this reading ministers to you. What have we learned? And if you have not subscribed, do subscribe. God bless you, shines his light upon you, and may we continue to grow and treat things of God with honor, adoration, praises, and may the Lord continue to help us daily, especially us believers. Who have had a one-to-one -one encounter with Christ. So we know that our God lives. Our God can do exceedingly more and abundantly more than we ask. So we should continue in faith to serve the Lord. And we are so privileged that we have the Holy Spirit that directs us daily. Let us be obedient to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth that is in us. God bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.